Hi friends, welcome to the Bible Project Daily Podcast. The project is, of course, as I've said before, to work together through the whole Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. Now, if you're joining me for the first time, remember there's always a full transcript of each and every one of these podcasts available in any audio version of the podcast. Now, the audio podcasts are hosted on buzzsprout.com, but it doesn't matter whether wherever you're receiving your podcast from, whether it be Amazon or Spotify or Google or Apple Podcasts or any of the podcast platform, within there, if you link through and look at the episode, there should be an episode notes page as well as a transcript and a chapter breakdown. So uh, if you happen to be watching the video version of the podcast on somewhere like YouTube or Facebook perhaps, then there should be a link through to the audio on Buzzsprout where you'll find the transcript there. Now, I'd like to remind you that you are always welcome to do with these talks or the text of them whatever you want. They're in the public domain. They're there for you to use, to utilize, to create your own resources, to teach or to preach, to create sermons, whatever you want. A credit's always welcome, but the bottom line is you can use them in any way you want. Please take them and run with them with my blessing. Now, within an episode notes page of every podcast, there are links to all the various ways you can access my ministries. There's even a link to my sound design website where I create both the music and the background uh, soundscapes for this podcast, but also there's some material re- related to other projects that I'm doing. And also in there, very quickly, you'll find a link to my Patreon page where I do make exclusive content available for my patrons. So if you're interested in that, I'll tell you a little bit more at the end. Now, you're probably aware that very recently we've moved to the slightly longer format of the podcast. Now, the reason there's all sorts of reasons we've done that, important reasons about how the format is structured and made available. But... Uh, the new chapter links if you would prefer just to listen to the middle section with the actual teaching you can do that by going into the chapter links within the podcast episode and drop straight into the teaching and skip any intro or outro or any extra stuff that doesn't interest you but also occasionally the the new podcast length is going to be just over 20 minutes So occasionally, if it doesn't feel that there's a natural break or a natural length in the area of the teaching, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share one of my uh, daily devotionals, the three-minute material that I'm working on based on the writing of Spurgeon. So occasionally, I may slip in one of those three-minute daily devotionals at the end just to make the podcast the, the length it needs to be. Uh, but also it'll be marked in the chapters so you can see the point at which each part of the teaching begins and finishes. But anyway, that's plenty of information to be going on with for now. Uh, I'd just like to thank you again for joining me, and I trust that you're uh, enjoying, but more importantly that you're benefiting from having the, the Word of God as part of the rhythm of your daily life. I thank you so much for joining and encouraging me just by sitting down and t- and by take, uh, by listening to this teaching every day. But for now, we'll just pause there and we'll jump in to the main study itself and I'll try and I'll see you hopefully again at the end. Bye bye for now. Now we're jumping off on a new section today. We're going to be closing out the closing part of Genesis chapter 30, looking at this story of Jacob and Laban and how they negotiate the apportionment of animals in the future, which of course are viewed very much as that time, the increase in flocks and herd as seen as the blessings of God. So we're going to spend some time, I think the next two episodes, looking at the closing part of Genesis 30. And as an overall general title for this, I've called this uh, this section over the next two days Getting Rich Quick. And it's going to cover the text from Genesis chapter 30, 25 to verse 34. Now, you've only needed to have spent five minutes on the internet in the, in the last year or maybe some time in social media 
and you wouldn't couldn't help but notice that there are thousands of get rich quick schemes people are forever coming up with schemes that they will tell you will make you rich quickly when was the last time i wonder that you came across a get rich squish quick try that again a get rich quick scheme have you ever been approached about one we've all heard of those scam emails where a supposed foreign prince approaches you and he wants to give you 10 percent of this colossal million million dollar fortune if you just allow him your bank details so he can transfer the cash into the uk using your bank account so what do you and what is your experience i wonder of get rich quick schemes such schemes are as common as leaves on the tree they're all over the place the problem is that none of these trees will ever bear any fruit so to speak meaning that they will not produce what they promise to produce what about bitcoins i'm sure you've heard of those is anyone you know or are you yourself investing in bitcoins now i know some people today are making money out of uh, cryptocurrencies but what is interesting to me is that there has never been a time in economic history when so many people are investing well billions worldwide in a financial instrument that the vast majority don't understand on even the most basic level and even a very glimpsing view of the of the science of economics will tell you that the main factors that drive any value in any marketplace are availability and confidence and with people not understanding what they're investing in i think obviously those type of investments if you approach them casually then they're at great risk of responding in fear with a mass exodus on any perceived downturn in value but so it's interesting to me that all of this is in the background in our lives today but did you under did you notice that there's a passage in the book of genesis that talks about a sort of get rich quick scheme and if you've just uh and if you just read the passage on its own and didn't take a little bit of time to unpack it a bit, it may look like that's one that was successful for the protagonists. So what I want to do for us over the next couple of days is look at this passage and ask what can we learn from this particular passage? What can we learn from this scheme that's set up here in the second half of Genesis chapter 30? So let's look with me and we'll pick the text up at verse 25 where we're told this. After Rachel gave birth to Joseph, Jacob said to Laban, send, on my, send me on my way so I can go back to my homeland. Give me my wives and my children for whom I have served you and I will be on my way. You know how much work I've done for you. Now let's pause for a second and play a little catch up. You will recall Jacob fled his own homeland, Palestine, and he goes back to Haran, where his family roots are. All because of this conflict he's had with his brother Esau. When he got to Haran and he met Rachel, it was a sort of love at first sight scenario. But Jacob got deceived by her father, uh, by Rachel's father Laban, and he ends up inadvertently marrying Leah, the older sister of Rachel, having worked seven years to get Rachel. So after seven years, he doesn't even get the girl he wanted. He gets the older sister of the girl that he wanted. So thereafter, he makes another deal with Laban to work another seven years so he can then have Rachel, as was initially agreed. So we open this passage. These years have been complete. And verse 75 says we're at the point where Rachel has given birth to Joseph. The last son of 12 that have been born to Jacob, not only from Rachel, but from, from Leah and the other wives. And Jacob at this point says, I want to go home. And that's what these opening verses are telling us. Jacob is telling his father-in-law and saying, look, I've fulfilled my obligations. I've fulfilled my contract with you, that promise that we made, that agreement that we made. And I would like now to take my wives and my children and all my possessions and go back from whence I came. And we see Laban respond to this 
in verse 27 when it tells us this. And Laban said to him, Please stay, if I have found favor in your eyes, for I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for your sake. Then he said, Name your wages, and I will give it. So Laban did not want Jacob to go. Now I think this is incredibly interesting. He said, I've learned that it is because of the Lord that I've been blessed. Now please notice that Laban uses the personal name of God here. He says, the Lord has blessed me for your sake. Now, we should stop and ponder on this for a while. If the people in your life were to say to you that they believe the Lord had blessed them because of you and because of the fact that you'd been in your life, well, for me, that's one of the greatest compliments that someone can ever receive. If someone said to you, you you know, it is a blessing from God that you are in my life. Well, I think that's an amazing testimony about you. And that's what Laban appears to be saying here. But if you consider it closely, you'll notice he's probably referring to material prosperity when he talks about blessing. But be that as may, it's a testimony that he believes that God has blessed him because Jacob has come into his family's life. Now, The challenge for us as Christians, friends, is I believe we are challenged to leave everybody in our lives that we come into contact with a bit a bit better off than we were they were before we met them. Spiritually, of course. And that's the kind of thing that Laban is saying here, but maybe he's just referring to material prosperity. But he also says, because of that, because of that fact. He says, don't leave. Please don't go back to your homeland. He says, just name your price and I will give it. I want you to stay. And Jacob responds to this in verse 29. And it says, so Jacob said to him, you know how I have served you and how your livestock have been with me. For what you have had before I came, I came was little and it has increased a great amount. The Lord has blessed you since my coming. And now, when shall I also provide for my own house? Now, this, by this answer, I think that's why we can identify that the blessing that Laban was referring to was material, because Jacob, in his response, points to flocks and herds as the way that the Lord has indeed blessed him. I've cared for your flocks, he says, and they've increased, and that, that has happened, and that has been done by the Lord through me. I've worked for 14 years, he reminds him, and you have been blessed and you have prospered financially and materially. But he's also implying, what have I got to show for it now? Nothing. So Laban says, what shall I give you? And Jacob said, and now here's the deal here, you shall not give me anything if, if you will do this thing for me. I will again feed your, her, your feed and keep your flocks. Let me pass through all your flock today, removing from them all the speckled and spotted sheep and the brown ones among the lambs and the spotted and speckled among the goats, and these shall be my wages. So my righteousness will answer for me in time to come. When the subject of my wages comes before you, every one that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and brown among the lambs will be considered stolen if it is with me. And Laban said, Oh, that it were according to your word. So he agrees. And this is the first part of the passage. And it's really about this curious deal between Laban and Jacob. And the deal is what I've just read. And it may sound a little complicated to our modern ears. So I'm just going to try and take a moment and unpack it a little for us. What you have to keep in mind is that Jacob said, I will remove from your flock all the speckled and spotted sheep, the brown lambs, the speckled and spotted goats. He's saying also that in the future, the spotted goats and lambs will be recognized as his wages. All right, got that? So what's so significant about that? In the future, the odd colored sheep coming to me and the pure colored ones will stay with you. And he says that will demonstrate that what I have done by you is right. 
Now, what is all this business about speckled and spotted sheep and brown lambs and speckled and spotted goats? What's the significance in this deal? And what's the significance in the message behind the story? Now, it helps us greatly to know that in the Middle East at that time, sheep were normally white and goats were normally black or dark brown. And exceptions to that were very rare. So what Jacob is saying is, I'm going to initially take and in the future maybe get the occasional odd off-coloured animal and I'm going to raise them. And that lot and that alone should be my wages. And if in the future there are any white sheep among my flock, then everybody will know and you will know I must have stolen them because I'm only going to keep and breed these odd-coloured animals. Got it? That's the deal. So what's really going on? Why would he want to do something like that? Well, firstly, very clearly, this plan puts the possibility of his acquiring wealth from here on in wholly in the hands and in the providence of God. If you recall, when Jacob was back at Bethel, God promised to care for him. So what he's doing by saying this is, he says, I'm really going to trust in the providence of God. That's certainly what it it says on the surface. I'll take these odd coloured animals and the Lord is going to multiply them and that's how I'm going to get paid and that will be my wages. In other words, he's saying, look Laban, this is an act of faith. Jacob's saying, I'm going to trust in the Lord to multiply those which do not normally to, and to give me enough of the type of animals which don't normally appear very often. All right, so we've got Laban's flock over here, all white, and anything odd colored is now going to go to Jacob, and that will be his wages in the future. And that's the deal. Got it? And the final verse in this section demonstrate that Laban agrees to the, this deal. Now, what our English translations don't really pick up the fact is that there is a real eagerness expressed in this verse. Laban's kind of saying immediately, okay. Let's do it, he says. Now, Laban no doubt thinks, look, I'm going to end up keeping all these animals and have many, many more animals in the future than Jacob's going to have. And he's going to have to work very hard for me for very little. So for him, that's a great deal. So not surprisingly, he quickly says, let's do it. So that's the deal. But we have to remember who we're dealing with here. We're dealing with Jacob, someone who scammed his own father to get his brother's birthright, tricked his own brother as well. We're dealing with Laban, who deceived Jacob into marrying the wrong daughter. So we've got two con men, two deceivers, making deals with each other. This can get nothing but interesting, friends, from here on in. So they've agreed how they're going to divide these flocks in the future. So the first part of the passage really goes into some detail about the deal that they make. Now, the second part of this passage is how they're going to implement that deal and how they make it outwork for themselves from this point forward in the future. Well, we'll see how that all works out in the next episode. Okay, friends, that's it for today. Now, I'd like you to remind you that you can access lots more of my teaching on my Patreon website, including some long-form versions of Bible teaching, along very soon with some discipleship courses that I'm placing there. Now, the first one of those is going to be one about uh, preparing a guide, if you like, to expository preaching. So if you've ever thought about developing or nurturing a preaching or teaching gift that you believe you've been given or others told you've been given, you may find that very helpful. But also I'll be putting there over the next month's links to some talks that I've done in secular environments. I, I, I greatly believe in going and meeting people at their point of interest and trying to make it an intersection point for them with faith. So I like going to groups, things like group, art societies uh, or, or mutual interest groups, and go and talk about their area on their terms, but try and find that link between the gospel, the word of God, the teaching of the Bible. And areas where I've done talks in the past are, are places like um, subjects like art, science, psychology, and even some stuff about mental health. 
and these talks I make available really only occasionally on YouTube or on my Patreon website. So on there you can become a patron which means you can support this work and this ministry for two pounds a month and by supporting the ministry you are primarily enabling the Bible Project daily podcast to keep going and remain free for everybody who wants to access it and hopefully remain free all always on the future on the web. It is my goal that the Bible Project podcast should stay as a free resource for anybody who wants it for as long as possible. And by becoming a patron, you are enabling that work to, to happen and you're enabling more people to access it. Another thing that's worth mentioning is if you're appreciating this and valuing this work, then I would please ask you to like, share or subscribe to it because that is the way that it enables the, prod, the podcast to be seen more widely and of that by nature will help the powerful word of God get into the lives of more people. But anyway, that's it for this time. I hope you've enjoyed our short time together today and that I hope that God is blessing you by having the rhythm of the Bible in your life every day. And finally, I'd just like to say thank you again, all of you. Thank you so much. By watching this, you're encouraging me. But, but I, of course, would really love and benefit, I know, from the prayers of those that pray about this ministry. Okay, that's it for today. I hope to see you back here, right back here again very soon. Tomorrow for me, but whatever day it happens to be you, I hope to see you back here on the Bible Project Daily Podcast. Bye-bye for now.